There's no question that changing your career late in life can be a terrifying prospect. But in this digital world we live in, this changing culture, this evolving economy, things happen beyond our control. And sometimes after 50, after 60, things happen that cause us to have to change our career. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about some techniques that will help you make that transition much more smoothly and help you get, hopefully, to an even better job than you were at before. How to change your career after 50. I've had an enormous number of people over the years come and ask me for my advice about changing their career late in life. Sometimes they really get frustrated with where they are. That may be you right now. You may just say, I've, you know, I've had this job for a long time. I'm not in danger of being fired, but it's not what I really love to do. It's not my passion. Other people have gotten fired. I got fired at 36, but getting fired at 46 or 56 or later is even more terrifying. So the question is, what are, there some, what are there things we can do to help that happen? In, in my book, One Big Thing, Discovering What You Were Born to Do, let me, let me just say, if you haven't read this, I'd encourage you to get a copy. Get a copy for anyone you know that is struggling in their career, trying to figure out what they were put on the earth to do. I, in this book, my premise essentially is that most people I meet will tell me, Phil, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good at a lot of stuff. Well, the people that stand out, the people that break through, the people that get noticed aren't those people. They're not the ones that are pretty good at a lot of things. They're generally the people who are extraordinary at one big thing. What I've discovered, though, is most people struggle their whole life to figure out what that one big thing is. What is that one thing that God put me on the earth to do? What is that one big thing that I'm wired to be amazing at? That's the question we all need to answer. And, and my book, One Big Thing, really walks you through a process, a very simple process. There's nothing mystical or weird or complex about it, but it's a, it's a great process for helping you discover what that one big thing is in your life. And I've had people just, you know, send me back remarkable stories of how the book has impacted them. So I'd encourage you, one big thing, discovering what you were born to do. Get it. Buy multiple copies. Get it for your friends, your kids who are struggling with what to do with their life. It can make a big difference. Now, now one thing I'll say is that in the book, I tell a lot of amazing stories. I went historically and I tell a lot of stories like Raymond Chandler, for instance. I've talked a lot in my career about Raymond Chandler, my favorite detective novelist of all time. He wrote The Big Sleep. I mean, he was just an incredible writer. Double Indemnity, he, he wrote the screenplay for that. He was just a brilliant detective novelist and, and screenwriter. And he didn't figure out what he was going to do until his late 50s. He was actually a oil executive. He was a, a, a drunk. He was a cheating husband, and his life was falling apart in his late 50s. And one day, he and his wife decided to take a drive. They, they lived in L.A. They decided to take a drive up the Pacific Coast Highway to maybe put their marriage back together. And he just happened to stop at a service station. And this is after a career in the oil business. He stopped at a service station, picked up a detective magazine, started reading through it, and thought, you know, I think I could do this. And he started studying it, and literally within a year, he came out uh, with his first detective novel and went on and on and on and became pretty much the greatest detective novelist of all time. And the other, other stories, um, a good one is Samuel Morse. You remember Samuel Morse from inventing the telegraph, which literally changed the world. But he was an artist. He started out as an artist. He had spent his whole life painting and uh, was very, very good at it and came down to being a finalist for a, a government commission. And when he didn't get the commission, when he didn't get the opportunity to paint the mural, he was so frustrated, went back to his apartment, didn't know what, to, what he wanted to do, was incredibly just unsure of his future. And he started tinkering with this thing he had in his apartment called a telegraph. And um, he went on, of course, we know that he went on late late in life to invent the telegraph that literally changed the world. So there's so, and I can go story after story, and there's many stories in one big thing about that very, very thing. And so I want to talk a little bit about when we face a new job prospect, when we face the opportunity to change our career, either forced or unforced, what do we do? I mean, do we do we leave our current job if we have another one we want to go to? Do we go back to school? Uh, do I do a, something on the side? You know, we call it today, they call it a side hustle. Uh, what are you doing on the side to make it happen? So let me give you some thoughts. If, if you're thrust into this situation where you have to change your career late in life, after 50, after 60, here's some things that I really want you to make notes of and spend some time thinking about. Uh, first is be bold, but don't be dumb. 
Be bold, but don't be dumb. Be intentional, be strategic. Really sit down and think about this. Write down, what do I need to do? What are the opportunities? What are the upsides? What are the downsides? Be strategic, however, don't be dumb. You have no idea how many people get so excited about a new prospect that they just leave their old job. Well, never leave your old job until you have some place to land in the new job. So be bold, but don't be dumb. It's just interesting that until we have a transition in place, you could lose everything, particularly if you have a family, if you have a mortgage, if you have others who depend on you, don't be dumb. And yet so often we get caught up in the excitement of a potential new career, potential new opportunity, and uh, sometimes that excitement can become our own worst enemy. So be intentional, but don't be stupid. Really have a plan in place to take you from where you are to where you want to be. Another thing I would say is don't burn your bridges. This will happen very often when we are fired, when we're let go, when we're terminated, uh, when things are being cut back. You know, we, we, we're hurt, we're angry, we're frustrated. We think, well, I'm going to show them. I'm going to tell them what I really think of them. Let me tell you, no matter how painful it is, I beg you, don't burn your bridges. You have no idea how many times you'll have the opportunity to go back to that client. I have a friend that uh, worked in the marketing department of a major studio here in Hollywood. He was in their marketing department and he decided that he would move on and start his own side business in marketing. And um, he had to, came to the time where he left the studio and he was frustrated. He didn't like working for the big studio. But when he left, he left on great terms. He didn't leave angry. He didn't leave upset. And guess what? Now that studio is a client of his new business. They kept the relationship going. So I don't care how much they've wronged you, how much you feel like they've taken advantage you, of you, how much, how angry you might be please don't burn your bridges. It doesn't help. I would even say, even if it hurts you financially in the short term, you'll find that it's worth it in the long term to keep that relationship on a positive level. You know, don't burn the bridge. It doesn't help. You never know how often. In fact, some people, when they find out the new career hasn't worked out, they want to go back to that job. But if they burn that bridge, that's an option that's simply off the table. It's not going to work, and it's humiliating in the process, so don't burn that bridge. The next thing is trigger your connections. The minute you start that transition, trigger your connections, because here's the thing. In the social media age, there's no reason we can't get the word out in a significant way, and that's another that's another big uh, aspect of why I tell people, even when you're in your job, even when you're comfortable in your job, if you like your job, still mobilize on social media, always be looking out, getting new connections, growing your followers, following people you respect and admire, developing relationships, networking. In the social media age, there's simply no excuse not to be networking like crazy so that when you do find that transition, it's easy. Now, when I got fired at 36 from my job, I had known a person that had worked there years before and he'd moved on. In fact, he was working at Phillips Petroleum, the, the big oil company and he was running their video division. And he was the first person to offer me a job after I got fired. He offered me a project, a short video that needed to be done to promote a, a refinery they were rebuilding that had exploded and was a catastrophe. And he wanted to document the rebuilding of that refinery. That was the first freelance project I ever did after getting fired from my job. And it's only because I stayed in touch with him. Even though he'd left a year or two before, I stayed in touch with him. I kept the relationship going. And then after that, another relationship and another relationship and another relationship started popping up. And I eventually launched my career and eventually the company we have today, Cook Media Group. So understand that, that there's, it's never too early to start triggering your connections to help you land safely in a new position. Um, I would say too, keep your resume updated. This is something I find out all the time. The number of people that get laid off are fired 50 or older and have not touched their resume in a decade or two. Why? They got complacent. They got comfortable. They got lazy. And so they haven't updated their resume. They don't have a new bio, bio that's updated. They haven't been looking out, they haven't keeping up their LinkedIn account. You know, those kind of relationships matter. So always, 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 I don't care how comfortable you are in your job, keep your resume updated because you just never know what could possibly happen. Markets change, 
fundraising changes, uh, jobs change, technology changes. It's not always because your boss is a jerk that you get laid off. Could be for any number of reasons. So always, always, you know what? We went through the coronavirus thing. I mean, it, remember that? That's the people were getting laid off left and right because businesses were closing. It wasn't anybody's fault. It was just this catastrophic moment in history. So even when things like that happen, your resume needs to be updated. You need to be remembering who your relationships are. So always keep your resume updated. You never know you know, when the opportunity will come to pursue your dream. And I would say, finally, brace yourself for the risk. I have to say, nothing is fair. Nothing in life is fair, and there will be risk. If you're changing your job after 50 or 60, whether it's forced or whether you're pursuing a new opportunity, understand that it could, it could fail. There's a real risk involved. Dreaming isn't safe, but if you're looking for a sheltered, secure future, what a boring life that would be. I just have to say that if you really want to change the world, if you want to leave your mark out there, you have to be willing to take a risk to do that. That's just part of what happens out there. Um, I just will say that discovering what your one big thing is after 50 or after 60 and stepping into that dream is the greatest thing ever. It's never too old to discover it. And that's why, let me just say again, get the book, One Big Thing, Discovering What You Were Born to Do. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can order it from a local bookstore. One Big Thing, Discovering What You Were Born to Do. I'm, I'm just going to say, this has everything you need to help you understand what is that one purpose I was put on the earth to do. What is that? It, it is, here's the thing. It's just a quick tutorial. It's not a job. Not that you're, you were put here to be a coach or you were put here to be a teacher or an insurance salesman or a real estate person. It's more of a calling. It's an overarching purpose for your life. And when you see that, when you discover that, suddenly doors open to individual jobs that would help you fulfill that most effectively. One big thing, discovering what you were born to do. I'd encourage you to get it. And, and the thing too is changing your job after 50 could happen any moment. Always, always be ready. I just tell you, I meet so many people that were blindsided. So many people that never gave it a second thought. They never realized it could happen. They were comfortable. The market wasn't changing. And then suddenly there was a shift of some kind and they were laid off. They were forced to step aside and 50 years old, 55, 60. And when it happens and they've not kept up and they're not ready, they're devastated. Absolutely devastated. I know people that that happened to them years ago and they still fully have it recovered. Some people just completely give up. So understand, we live in a, a fallen world. Anything could happen at any time, but if you follow these rules, if you at least take care of these critical steps, it'll help, you in, it'll help to ensure the fact that when that shift happens after 50, you're going to land in a much safer spot. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for following this podcast. Thanks for sharing it. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for liking it and telling people about it. We just appreciate it so much. It means so much to us because we want this information to get out there and help as many people as possible. Again, go to my website, philcook.com. Sign up for my newsletter. Every couple of weeks, I send a newsletter out with my top blog posts that you don't even have to go to the website from then on because I will e email them to you for absolutely free. And it'll get you the kind of information you need to help tackle your career, your future, and your calling in a much more effective way. Thanks a lot for tuning in.